Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Small Business Show. We have a really interesting uh, interview for you today. We're going to talk a lot about franchising and uh, what works, what doesn't. And we've got a, you know, just a really uh, a great depth of information that with a, related to a specific type of franchise, but also just franchising in general. And uh, I learned a ton from the, from this show and I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to roll into it. Yeah. This is an enlightening one for sure. Yeah. I, I, on many different levels, one certainly about franchising, but others as well as you'll hear throughout the show. And I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But, but there's a lot to learn just listening to, uh, it's Andrew Miller who we've got here and listening yep. to his style of, of just how he approaches things. I think there's a lot to learn there too. So. Yeah. Well beyond what we're talking about franchise, Correct. just about sales in general, yeah. uh, you know, making sure you're transparent and really, you know, putting a lot, all that good data out there. And, and it's kind of a soft sell, right? Would you agree? Cause I, yes, I, yeah. I, I mean, he wasn't here to sell us, nor no, was he here all. to sell you not folks, but, but I, I, it certainly seems like his approach is, is very much the soft sell. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because they're trying to find the right fit and, and you definitely want to stick around to the end. He, he's got a great uh, exit comment about, you know, what someone should look for. And uh, you know, when they're looking for a franchise, it, it, it's really helpful. Um, I think you're going to enjoy the show. I think so too. Are you ready to get rolling, Shannon? I'm ready to small business, man. Well, let's let's small business then. He is Shannon Jean. I am Dave Hamilton, and this is episode 305 of the Small Business Show. No, we do. It's one of the it is one of the most common questions, Shannon. You're spot on. I think in any franchise brand is, hey, look, let's you know, kind of dive to the main question I've got is how much can I make? You know, what's the first year look like? What's the next three years, five years look like? So. We have, like every franchise company has, a franchise disclosure document that I usually spend usually an hour on our initial call going over um, not only the document, but just basic questions around marketing, support. Um, and on the, on the kind of return of investment, I think there's no better person to talk to than a local franchise owner in your state um, calling up a few especially with the pandemic i think asking those tough questions which what was it like pre what's it like post as a company we're very very fortunate to be in a position to be year over year 30 percent above our target from last december to this december So we've spoken to hundreds of small business owners over the past six years here on the show. And, you know, a lot of founders starting things on their own, but also, uh, you know, a number of folks that were franchise owners that have had success with various franchise businesses and stuff. And I know nothing about franchises. So it's, oh, yeah. it's kind of fascinating. We, we almost franchised one of ours oh. uh, years and years ago. Oh, That's and then cool. we decided, it, no, it was too much, too much headaches. But, uh, I you know, terms it, of- yeah. Okay. And and I recall actually having a guest on the show. His name escapes me right now. But that one when I asked him what his best mistake was, uh, he said it was what trying to franchise their business. I don't know if you remember that. Um, who I do. That? Absolutely. Gary, Gary Von Meer from. Uh, Gosh, I can't recall. That's well, right. Yeah, yeah we'll think, put a link in the show notes. Yeah, we'll that put one, a link. Let's talk it, about it. So it's great that we have somebody with us today head. that uh, can. You know, go through the uh, this franchise thing's great, and we get to talk today. We're going to talk to Andrew Miller. He's a franchise sales specialist with You Break I Fix, which is a, a fascinating business model. And we're going to dig deep into the franchise business model to see what makes it work for some people, maybe not for others. Uh, <laughs> and and you know, we're going to talk about it. And, and I'm really excited to learn. Andrew, thank you for joining us today. Hey, David Shannon, great to have uh, have me on. I'm I'm excited about this interview. Yeah, it's cool. Um, now, so let, let's kind of start. How, how did you uh, find your way to You Break I Fix and to learning all about franchise business sales? And and, and tell us kind of what your job is as well. I, I so I I don't know. Yeah, and and I, I think I think Shannon, you opened it up so well with franchising. It, it really isn't for everybody. I like to mention that on my initial <laughs> my initial conversations with everyone, and you know, franchising might not be the right fit for you. It might, you know, let's let's dive in and see if it is the right fit for you. Um, but in terms of my road to franchising, 
Um, I, I heard about the company through a friend in Orlando, Florida. He's the controller uh, for You Break, I Fix. His name is Micah. Anyway, he, he mentioned about four years ago that they were looking to expand uh, this franchise model. And, and I'd seen You Break, I Fix stores locally uh, that fix gadgets. I had never yep. used the service yet. Uh, I, I am now an avid breaker of devices, I realized. <laughs> um, I, I definitely drop devices more than I'd like to admit. But that was my um, way into the, the company with You Break, I Fix. And what my role is, is really just to educate prospects on what You Break, I Fix is, the business model. You know, to your point, Shannon, if this is the right fit for them from a career move, from an investment right. move, all the above. And, and on our side... I'm very fortunate to be in a role where I get to make sure this is the right fit for us to bring on board as well, the right people. Yeah, because you want them to be successful, right? You don't want to have somebody there that you're just pulling teeth to try to make it work, right? It really is. I think I think for us, you know, having people that are passionate about business and you know, just the just the obvious ones, customer service, you know, they they like working with people. If if that's not something people find that's the right the right fit for them. There are other franchise out there that I think are maybe less customer service facing. But for us, yeah, we want to make sure people are passionate about working with people, being in the local market, you know, making a change and an impact in the community. Yeah, that's cool. That, that's good. So, okay, so let's answer, you know, we have thousands of small business owners and, you know, tons of aspirational small business owners that are listening that that are trying to get out on their own or make the jump from corporate to, to their own thing. Why a franchise versus starting out on your own? And I guess what I mean by that is, can you highlight some of the pros and cons, um, you know, independent versus a franchise, what you get, maybe what you don't get, something like that? Yeah, I think I think across franchising, kind of a, a rule of thumb is, I think for one, I guess the pros of franchising versus maybe the possible cons of doing it yourself is you have a you have an inbuilt business model already proven. Hopefully, there's a, hopefully there's a track record. You know, dub, double, triple check that that they've got a proven concept, not only in the state or city you live in, but how many stores do they have across the U.S. You know, what's their success rate? What's right, their failure right. rate? I think I think what I like to do is encourage prospects to not only ask the easy questions about you know what's it like to be an owner, but ask about the stores that have maybe failed or the you know why they failed. So I think. One big thing for franchising, I think for for us anyway, is having a business plan or a playbook, I call it, that's already been written. And you as an owner, you can add your own, you know, I guess, you know, kind of spin on things with whether it's hiring the right people that you want to hire locally or if it's family, but follow the playbook that's been done for the last, you know, 10, 15 years, however long it is. And um, I think another pro to franchising is having an inbuilt customer base who are hopefully already loyal. You know, whether it's McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, whoever, people know that name. You know, they 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 they, they might not for me, I, I'm not a huge fan of fast food. I try and stay away from it. I know it's just after Thanksgiving and I've put on a few pounds, <laughs> but I think a proven having a proven business model, support is another huge thing versus independent. If you're going to go out and do it on your own, you know all the best to you. But that's that sometimes isn't the easiest way to have the right people around you, training, access to parts yourself, the location aspect, real estate choices. You know, if you have that knowledge, great. You know, but I think if it's an independent kind of going on your own, doing it, is the market saturated? You're going into is another thing to look at. If it's a new new business plan, new business model, sure, I think it's worth exploring and getting some wise counsel around you before you do it. But if the market's pretty saturated and you're trying to do it yourself, I think you're kind of swimming upstream. It's going to be fairly challenging to do. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk more about that, specifically uh, your market and and that, that saturation and stuff. I, I have some questions about that too. But one of the uh, things that comes up as you talk about the support and the guidebook and everything, which I, I I do think is great, but like I'm I'm a fiercely independent 
person. We we call Dave and I call ourselves patently unemployable, right? Because <laughs> we like to just you know do things on our own and and try all kinds of stuff. How um, how wide of a lane do you get as uh, and and I I know just speaking to your franchise model, okay. uh, are there you know, is there is there room for uh, an independent minded person to kind of maneuver within there, or do you really need to kind of stick to that guidebook to to have those good results? Yeah, that's a great question. So we we as a company, we want to collaborate with every owner that comes on board. And when I say that, just to expand on what what I mean in more detail, once once um, someone's gone through their due diligence, they move forward with our brand. You'll work with a team. That'll collaborate with real estate choices in the market. And um, the people that you hire, it's a hundred percent up to you. You know, we'll give you guidance on who to look for, questions to ask in an interview situation. But you do have flexibility and autonomy to hire whoever you think's the right fit. And um, in terms of marketing local businesses in your area, you know, to your point, kind of the independent having that DNA. You know, for us, we want owners to kind of run their local. Um, their local community, you know, going out to Chamber of Commerce, you know, joining uh, local businesses, making sure that you're networking, you know, at least once or twice a month. And there's some things that, you know, with franchising, it just comes with the territory. You know, with us, we have partnerships with Samsung and Asurion and Verizon, which there's there's certain protocols and guidance you have to follow and regulations. But yeah. the bigger picture, yeah, there's we've got quite a few owners that are just entrepreneurs, came on board and um, you know, wanting to do it themselves. And we gave them the playbook, but within that playbook, we said, Hey, here's there's kind of free reign in these areas you can run with, which for us it was really a win win situation. Yeah, that's cool. And and you guys take feedback from those types of owners to help improve things? Like if someone comes up with a new way to, you know, do some repair, kind of like the guy who invented the, I don't know, the Egg McMuffin or something that that I'm sure was a franchise owner uh, at some point. Do you do that same kind of thing? There are literally products launching this month. This is December 1st, as we speak in initiatives that were brought up from our franchise advisory board. So we ah, and the, oh, I wow. see, I see. We have a yeah. So they they meet typically biweekly, and they'll actually, and whether it's their the top sales in a certain state or the you know best at labor, best at market, and we choose kind of the, I guess the top tier um, on the advisory board across the U.S. and Canada. And for us, they give us feedback, and for us, it keeps us on our toes as a company, which wow. we like because. Franchise owners will never shy away of telling them, telling us how we, how they feel at the corporate level. So I love the dynamic of that. And um, so the advisory board will give us insight of just what's happening on the local store, local level. Yeah, that seems really important. Uh, yeah, I, so I, I'm I'm looking at this kind of the same way you are, Shannon. With the the, uh, it, it, am I gonna? Am I the right guy for this yeah. because of how independent I am? And so I guess the the question that I'd have for you, Andrew, is when you see someone like Shannon or I who starts with a phrase like patently unemployable, <laughs> you, you know, like how much of a warning sign is that for you uh, in a scenario like this? Because clearly, you know, in order for the brand to be the strong brand that it is, you you have to have your owners your your franchises following a, a probably pretty strict set of rules right so how 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 dangerous are people like Shannon? <laughs> yeah they're <laughs> very <laughs> that's a, that's a great question so yeah we like to obviously make sure this is the right fit early on in the process you know we're right. we want to make sure we sync up and we our expectations line up and I, I've had the pleasure of working. You guys sound very similar to a few owners I've worked with over the years, where they've kind of gone out and done it themselves very well. And they're like, "Why? Why would I even want to look at franchising? You know, I, I feel I can do maybe just as good a job on my own." So for us as a company, I, I always will just tell you know prospects one, you know, connect with some owners that have a very similar mindset, entrepreneur focused background as you. And we have a list of every owner in the U.S. So very early on in the process, I'm like, hey, this is kind of the, the the overview, the expectations for us as a brand. But here's a list of five to 10 owners that have the same background as you, 
talk to them, see if corporate would be the right fit for your, you know, personality with your, your ambitions. Yeah, yeah that's smart. And sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll call up and say, yeah, you guys are maybe a bit strict for us. And other, other times it's a great fit. They're like, hey, we'll follow the playbook, but we also will add our own spin on things where we, where we can. And, and usually it matches up well. Sometimes, you know, there's, I think, 4,000 franchise opportunities out there to choose from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's okay. Cool. So that, that makes sense. I mean, as a business owner, it's certainly coming in, it, you identify, okay, well, I'm, I've got a proven business model. I'm going to have support. I've got a loyal customer base. The branding is already done for me. It, you know, you have to know that there's a compromise to that here. <laughs> you know, sure. you, you, if you want to be part of that, you actually have to want to be a part of that, not just take advantage of that. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, I, I'll, and I'll usually encourage, um, owners prior to even being an owner with us as they're doing their due diligence is once you, you know, you're all in with us is, you know, follow that business model that we've done just over 600 times now across the U S and Canada. But once you get to a certain level where you're hitting the average economics, you know, across the country, you're, you're doing well, let's, let's sync up. If you have feedback for us, we would love to hear how we could improve at the local level, but you know, follow at least for a year or two, and then let's look at the other ideas we can explore with you. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I hey, like I want to take a break here and talk about our two sponsors for this episode. Our first sponsor today is Remote HQ. Listen, we are all working online right now. And for a lot of us, well, some of us, we've been doing this for a very long time, but a lot of us are going to be doing this for a very long time. And you want to make sure you have a tool that is not just video conferencing and screen sharing. That's great. That should be a part of the tool. But what you want is true collaboration. You want all your web tools and your people in one place. You want to replicate online all the ways that people work together physically in a virtual office. And that is what Remote HQ delivers. You create a Remote HQ workspace. Within that, you can create unlimited rooms. You can see who is in which room. You can look at past sessions in each room. You can bring different apps into a Remote HQ room to customize the way you collaborate. So if you want that shared browser, Great. You use Trello or something like that. Great. You just bring it in. You use Miro, bring it in. You use YouTube, bring it in. Google Drive, no problem. Bring it in, right? And this way, you're truly creating that collaborative environment. That virtual office is right there inside Remote HQ. And there's no software to download because the platform is browser based. You've got to go check it out. And in fact, you have to go specifically to remotehq.com slash partnerships slash SBS for a free trial. And then, and this is really important, when you're ready to launch, use code SBS. That's for the small business show. SBS for three months for free. So go check it out. We've got links in the show notes at businessshow.co if you want it there. Uh, but remotehq.com slash partnerships slash SBS for that free trial and then code SBS for three months free. Our thanks to Remote HQ for sponsoring this episode. Our next sponsor is BetterHelp at betterhelp.com slash SBS. Look, what interferes with your happiness? Is something out there preventing you from achieving your goals? I mean, there's a lot going on right now. I know for me, it's really helpful to have someone to talk to. And that's why BetterHelp is there. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You get to connect in a safe and private environment because it's online and it's so convenient. You can start communicating in less than 24 hours because this is not self-help. It is truly professional counseling. You just get to do it safely, privately from your computer online right there. You can send a message to your counselor at any time and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video and, and or phone sessions, right? You don't have to do it video. Uh, you can do it over the phone, just voice. No problem. And you don't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room, which these days is even better. Like that's 
part of what BetterHelp is great for. And they are committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. They have licensed professional counselors who have specialized in all kinds of things. Of course, depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, anger, family conflicts, self-esteem, and of course, anything you share with them is confidential because that's how that works. You've got to check it out. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. So we want you to start living a happier life today. And as a small business show listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com SBS. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash SBS. And our thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, back to you. Yeah, this is really cool because I, I, li- I really like the background of, of this concept of making sure the fit is right for, for both parties because it's just, I mean, it's just intrinsically uh, the smartest way to do it because, you know, you don't want somebody to buy in that's going to be miserable and, you know, vice versa. I, I think it's great. So looking at franchises, I mean, your, your You Break, I Fix is, is a really pretty technical business model. Is, is that the type of person that you know you try to recruit or that is typically uh, attracted to yours or do they not need to have those skills because they can hire people w- what do you recommend yeah great question that's probably one of the, my favorite questions i get on our initial conversations so we we have about 40 to 45% of our owners across the country are from other franchise brands um, who have oh. diversified over the last five to 10 years. We've mm. got owners with oh. McDonald backgrounds. We've got owners with um, over 100 Verizon stores in Pennsylvania, Sprint owners, Popeyes. I mean, the, the list goes on, hair salon owners. Um, but then the other group are people that are maybe corporate refugees. Um, <laughs> I, th- that, <laughs> I, I stole that, that, I, I that from, from somebody else. I can't take credit, but th- they come from the corporate take, world. Take credit. It's fine. Nobody knows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and they've spent, you know, 20, 30 years and done really well for themselves. And they are looking to be, you know, to quote them, be their own boss. Um, you know, looking to diversify, you know, do something different with their career. So um, you do not have to have a repair background. Um, yeah. Most people coming on board don't have a repair background. Never fix a device. You know they can turn their smartphone on, maybe hit 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 the TV button to hit their TV on or laptop. Right. But ask them to fix a device. They're like, where do I start? So we do have a six weeks training course, and we have ongoing training. But a lot of these devices are really plug and play. And yeah. I, I realized from from experience, I did not come from a repair background. I studied um, in Scotland where I grew up for 25 years, born and raised in Scotland. I would have never have guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> for, for anyone listening, uh, that's where I'm from. So I am. Um, I realized I, I spent some time in stores early on uh, before joining corporate with You Break I Fix, and I realized that a lot of devices are just plug and play. You know, they're they look advanced, they're expensive, but when you actually break the d- device apart. They're all very similar. You know, maybe there's a certain screen that's bigger on a tablet versus a smartphone, but they all have screws. They all have a power input. They all have a, a motherboard. They're fairly basic at the core of them. So uh, to answer that question here, yeah, you do not have to have a repair background at all. We'll train you up on repair. That's great. Yeah, that, I would say that's a good testament to yeah. your training system if you're willing to put – because, uh, I mean – Yes, yeah, somebody buys into this franchise concept. They're going to put a lot of work into it, but clearly, there's a ton of work on the back end with your team to get somebody up and running and to get them successful, which is what you want. There is, yeah. We yeah. we have uh, just now, I believe, just over 150 corporate employees in Orlando, and most of them working from home as we speak. Um, and and I'm sorry to use the word pandemic on this show, but oh, that's okay. Yeah. With the we, pandemic, we all live amongst it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so for us, most most of the team is just support for owners when they come on board, from site nice. selection, marketing, um, training team. Uh, on we also do an on-site training for three weeks when your store is up and running. Up and running. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. This is this is great stuff for the background. I I love it. So. 
how does somebody, uh, you know, go about finding, you know, okay, we've got a corporate person that wants to go out on their own or they, we have maybe have an independent, like, oh, I want to get some support. What, where does someone start to look for a franchise to try to find the right fit? Yeah. Great, great question. So, um, even people that inquire through our website, I'll always give them, you know, other options to look at if this might not be the right fit for them. And I would usually start with um, the IFE, um, International Franchising Expo. On there, there's okay. actually a ton of different opportunities you can look at um, online. So I'll actually walk them through the IFE website, different franchise opportunities that they can explore. So they can, they can actually narrow it down. So if they're into the food space, they, they, think, they think that's the right fit. They can type in certain food industries, you know, hour of operation. If it's the automobile industry, whatever it is, they can actually explore. Um, and I think there's about 4,000 opportunities on there. And then once they narrow them down, you know, make sure you spend a bit of time with not only corporate, but talking with owners. And I think I mentioned that at the start. Make sure you talk to a few owners in that business. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So... Okay, so I want to jump back into this uh, "you break, I fix" uh, you know business model. I, I'm fascinated by it. I, I, I'm sure it's because I was in the repair business for 20 plus years. Uh, I'm happy to be out of it now. But, <laughs> but my take on that business is, you know, it really evolved over a few decades. And once it became more of a, a, a commodity type business for things like phone repair, that franchise model really started to make sense. I think to stabilize the the market you were talking about things getting saturated also i i think the franchise model kind of brings quality standards you mentioned national branding also parts availability i mean i can't tell i'm, I'm yeah. sure you understand the amount of time you you put in trying to source quality parts i mean do you think i'm on the right track with that or is is, is my framing not not no, correct you're, you're spot on shannon so okay. i think um as you know the industry very well yourself Prior to to us franchising, to quote our CEO Justin, you know, it was kind of the wild, wild west back right. in two thousand and seven, eight, nine. You know, and it's such a young industry. Even to the, to this day, we've just been very fortunate and blessed to be able to land a lot of national partners, which has given us a lot of credibility and I think value to customers nationwide. But yeah, absolutely, I think for us, I think one of the best decisions we did was back in two thousand and thirteen was to offer this as a franchise. And we had 47 corporate stores in different states back in 2013 and felt the franchising model was just the right fit for us. If we could, you know, partner up with the right people um, nationwide, they have their own ownership, kind of piece of the pie of the the market share with repair, this could kind of be a a home run. And for us, and really to brag on our owners right now, to be at 604 stores nationwide is is just incredible. And, um, you know, to be partnered up with the likes of Samsung, Google, and to your point, Shannon, access of parts. Oh my oh, goodness. Yeah. I won't spend long <laughs> here. But yeah. Access, we could do a whole show. Yeah. On that. Yeah. I won't, I won't, I won't bore people on inventory, but having our own distribution center in the U S as a company, having access to OEM parts, the same part that you buy when you buy that new phone, we have access to with our partnerships on the repair. So it's um, it's truly changed over the last four or five years with the national partners. That's cool. Yeah, that's great. So we, we talk about, if, you, if you've ever listened to the show before, we always talk about mistakes because primarily since I've made so many, but it, it, also <laughs> just because we, you know, they teach you so much. Uh, you know, we re- we wrote a book on it, all about mistakes and their uh, small business show guides. So, what mistakes do you see potential franchise owners making when they're getting started? Is there common things that tend to happen? Yeah, I think one is the hiring side of the business. I'll I'll always go on the side of when you hire for our business specifically, and um, someone with repair that. That is something that it's great, but I would always encourage someone to go with customer service over repair. Ah, um, I see. So that's something I think for, and in, in just in general, I think is another thing to touch on with franchising is when somebody comes on board, I think they, I think most franchises offer great support. Um, I'm sure there's some are maybe more stronger than that, but I think sometimes people are like, okay, I've got support from corporate. 
I'll leave it up to them to do the real estate side, the marketing side. So we're the training wheels on the bike, but an owner must pedal the bike. Um, I know it's a cheesy analogy to give. No, I like it. Yeah. For for us, like you know, that's that's kind of our motto as a team is we're the training wheels, but you have to pedal along with us. Be be involved. Understand your people. You know, be at the store. It doesn't have to be every single day at the start, but be there. You know, as much as possible. And I think another thing too, sometimes when people, you know, you hear the quote all the time: diversify uh, your portfolio. I think only do that is if you or you have a trusted owner or partner with you that can spend the needed time to get that new part of your portfolio up and running. I think sometimes people kind of forget it. They'll set it and forget it. And, right. and if you don't run your business, you know, you're kind of your business runs you that whole old saying. I think it's so true in franchising. If you're not hands-on involved at the very start, you might be setting yourself up for maybe failure before you've even picked up, you know, a device or picked up a, you know, whether it's a, a food franchise, whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. But I think it's great advice because I, I could see that, you know, wanting to be hands off dashboard type, you know, uh, thing, but not, and I, I I think you have to be involved. And and I and I really like your focus on the customer service side. Dave always reminds us that every business is in the customer service business, whether you're making sandwiches, fixing, you know, phones and tablets or, you know, selling cars, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it's all that stuff. Um, so we, we also love stories on the show. I'm going to give you the opportunity, you know, maybe you can share a story or two with us or, or you know, uh, either a franchise disaster, someone that's been really successful, one or both, Any, anything come to mind that that uh, you could share with us today? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll lean on the side, especially because it was Thanksgiving. And um, so I guess <laughs> grat- gratitude for us as, as a, a company is our owners, they don't even have to do this, but they get fully involved. If there's a, you know, a tornado that went through Nashville recently or when there was you know bad storms in Houston not long ago, whatever it is, whenever there's a d- disaster, our, we reach out corporately to say, hey, would you want to offer free repairs to you know local ambulance, fire, police, you know even customers that aren't serving in that capacity? If they've been affected in a certain city or state, would you g- get on board and kind of give back to your community? Never had an owner say no. They've always said, yep, happy to offer that locally. Um, and our partners, by the way, Samsung, right. Google, uh, all the above, they always get on board too. So that's, I guess that's kind of a feel good factor for us is it, kind of the bigger yeah. picture is people have devices that they have 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, smartphone is on my desk oh, all the time, yeah. always yeah. in my pocket. So for that to break or that to be an inconvenience, we just want to kind of pay that forward to our owner. So it's probably the most recent one um, this year. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah, I think that you know, back to that that repair that repair business model. You know, I, I can remember we were doing overnight laptop repair everywhere in the U.S. and we had our boxes in every DHL truck. Uh, you could pick it up by two p.m., get it overnight, repair it, send it back overnight, and that was at the time. I'm dating myself. Phenomenal. But when the phones came along, it was like, wait, I can't leave this thing. <laughs> you know, sure. I've got to be with it, and and it just changed that that business, you know, uh, uh, so much. So I, wait, wait, I have I have a I have a question. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. have to ask because yeah. so much of our background together, and certainly, you know, my other businesses are rooted in the Apple world. Yeah. And I would be remiss if I didn't point out that I've noticed you like not once have have mentioned Apple as a partner. Now I know if I go to You Break I Fix, uh, I see that that iPhone repairs are part of what you do, but but yet Samsung and Google are the only things you mention. It, is there? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to yeah. put you in too weird of a spot, <laughs> no, but I know you're, Apple you're, is, a, is an interesting company to work uh, with in terms of sourcing, and Shannon yeah. knows far more about that than me. So, yeah. so you you brought up a great point. So this is actually a recent update. I was going to sh- save it to the end because Apple's uh, okay. a, Apple's such a big one. No, I like that you brought it up. So we are we are as of July of this year, we're on Apple's independent repair pro- provider oh, program. Nice. Congratulations! Yeah, yeah. That's great. Thank you. So uh, if you go on their their website um, on Apple for the independent program, there's 700 stores, give or take, that are on there. And over 550 of them are our stores. 
across wow. the country. So that's okay. a big deal. It that's is huge. Yeah, oh. I, I'm a huge. I, by the way, I'm an Apple geek. I've got an Apple yeah. watch on. I love iPhone. So um, yeah. yeah, we we are able to access um, genuine Apple parts through our through our partnership with Asurion. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, pr- pretty cool. Kind of a, a step in, in in the right direction with Apple. I had yeah. no idea that anyone could get genuine Apple parts. Yeah, they oh, announced that. Was it last did. year? Did they? Yeah, announce I didn't know if they any if they actually opened it up. Like, yeah. there's a difference between an announcement and this. Yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're we're super pumped to to be able to yeah. offer that to to customers. That's well, great. congratulations. Say, yeah, congrats. You know, from that perspective, as uh you know, things just got harder and harder and harder to get quality, you know, product and parts. Uh, that is just a huge uh, step up if you, if somebody wants to be in that business and and that bring that the stability that it brings uh, where you can do this cookie cutter approach is is phenomenal. Yeah. You, you guys are spot on. I think for I always going back to the customer aspect and, um, you know, the fact that customers now can just feel um, and, and nothing against mom pop stores and independent. Oh, There's some incredible ones out there, but yep. for us as a brand, being able to offer the same experience um, day in day out across the country. If you're if you're traveling to New York and you're based in Chicago, just like if your favorite coffee shops there, you feel like I know that name, I know that brand, I feel safe, I can trust it wherever I am. Yeah, that's have really you cool. have you folks ever acquired a mom and pop? like one-off type shop to to sort of expand the brand and, and, and yet inherit a good location and customer base or anything like that? Yeah, we have, we, we still, we still actually offer right now, um, uh, kind of a conversion program for Uh people that want the other right fit, you know, they're in a market that's available and we cover, we cover 85% of the country right now with our stores and vans that we, we provide. So there's, I guess the window of opportunity in some states is already closed. There's some still availability in certain markets, but um, yeah, we do. We've had um, about I would say about thirty stores out of the five hundred, sorry, six hundred now that are open are ones that are mom pop stores, really strong, and um, you know they wanted to partner up with us, so they, wow. they joined the family. That's, cool. that's, yeah, that's great. Really great. That's a that's a huge testament to what you're doing over there. That's great. Yeah, thanks. Thank great. you. Yeah, we're, so we're looking to have them. Yeah, so I, I've poked around in all these franchise sites, and I'm always looking for opportunities during the course of my career. And and the on um, these websites and forums where people are talking about, and you know, and it seems like it, if not the number one, it's certainly in the top five. You know, the question I usually see is, you know, it's something along the lines is, okay, how much money can I make if I if I get this franchise and start this up? Do you, do you get that same question? And if if you do, how do you answer it? Because as a business owner, you know, there's so many variables that impact, uh, I would imagine, a particular franchisee's success, right? So, so how do you deal with that question if, if you get it? Maybe you don't. No, we do. It's one of the, it is one of the most common questions, Shannon. You're spot yeah. on. I think in any franchise brand is, hey, look, let's, you know, kind of dive to the main question I've got is how much can I make? You know, what's the first year look like? What's the next three years, five years look like? So we have, like every franchise company has a franchise disclosure document that I usually spend usually an hour on our initial call going over um, not only the document, but just basic questions around marketing, support. Um, and on the on the kind of return of investment, I think there's no better person to talk to than a local franchise owner in your state um, calling up a few, especially with the pandemic. I think asking those tough questions, which what was it like pre, what's it like post as a company, we're very, very fortunate to be in a position to be year over year, 30% above our target from last December to this December. Nice. So I think a big part of that is our national partners that we have. So um, yeah, from a return of investment, we kind of go through, um, and, and I won't go through all the numbers here, yeah, obviously. Sure, sure. But yeah, we spend a lot of time going Great. over. A, we show on our financials in our FDD an, an average of our sales, we also show the top twenty-five, and and I don't know how to be more transparent. We actually show our bottom twenty-five to everybody too, to kind of give you guardrails with the business. That's great. Yeah, I, I just would think that 
that transparency and openness and like, here, call this guy or yeah. just, just, you know, talk to this group and see how they're doing. Cause you know, they're going to be pretty honest. I would imagine. They are. Um, they they, they want to yeah. bring on people that are, especially if they're going to be neighboring owners from 20, 20 miles away, 30 miles yeah. away. They want to have a good owner in the market with the brand. Yeah. That's really cool. Andrew, you know, some really great information today. It, have have I left anything out? Is there any other, uh, you know, information that you would like our listeners to understand about the business model? Anything that would help them make a decision if, you know, franchise is right and what type of franchise? Anything that I that I haven't asked you? Yeah, I, I think one, one thing just to kind of narrow down into is, is the partnerships that we have. Um, you know, it's almost, I remember an owner saying this, um, it's kind of like starting at second base with the franchise. Then there's... Uh-huh. I, I couldn't name too many out there that has an inbuilt customer base that when you open up your store, almost like a light switch going on at Samsung, it's Google, Asurion, um, Asurion's the largest insurance company in North America with 150 million customers in the US. Having that customer base, to they get sent to the local store for convenience nice. for customers is... Yeah. I mean, there, there's really, for us, no one that can kind of compete with that sort of level of customer base. Um, and I think, too, cool. if someone's interested in reaching out uh, at ubreakifix.com or, or or emailing me directly, I think just the software side of our business, too, um, we have our own built-in software system, training, marketing. I mean, um, we are, a, I would say at this time, Shannon and Dave, our business is a turnkey opportunity for owners. That's awesome. Well, that's, yeah, that's and great. That's, that, I mean, as a business owner coming or a potential business owner coming into a franchise, you want that turnkey. Yep. I mean, that that's part of what you're yeah. paying for upfront and over time. Correct. So, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm really glad to learn about how how this works and and your insight into that franchise model. And I think there's just some great, you know, data for our listeners to to run through and listen and to make a decision about any franchise. And you know. Um, it, so we're going to put your info in the, in our show notes uh, at businessshow.co. Is, is there anywhere else that they, that our listeners should go to connect with you or to learn more about uh, the You Break, I Fix opportunity? Yeah, I, I would go either on youbreakifix.com forward slash franchising. Or also, if you just want to get an understanding of just the devices we fixed, we actually have a, a YouTube page as well that shows different devices. So if that's a... I, usually that's a question mark for people. They're like, I, I'm a little hesitant because I don't know how to fix devices. Check out our YouTube page. It just shows different devices we fix, what it's like to work in a store. Oh, that's great. And and I think you guys are really well positioned because clearly uh, these devices are getting more and more important to us and uh, nobody wants to give them up. So having those local uh, you know, repair centers is 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 critical important. Andrew, thank you again for spending uh, part of your day with us and educating us about franchising and uh, keep in touch. And, you know, we'd love to hear from you from time to time. Awesome. Honored to be on the show, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Man, what a great natural salesperson he is. I mean, I know he's honed his craft, but, you know, I'm always looking for like the automatic things that people do and his immediate reply to everything we asked him, great question, right? Like he, yep, that that's classic sales and it's basic sales, but it's so effective and it's truly is. If you learn one thing from this episode, it's when you're in that scenario with someone who's looking to buy from you, but get used to doing it everywhere so that it's just automatic and natural. You want to be as natural as him and say, great question because it yeah, keeps super, that person engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And then. That that back and forth of well, I just kept hearing me. Well, we you know we want to make sure it's the right fit. Yeah, right? If for the buyer and the person that's going to take you know buy this franchise, but also for them because yes, if if they bring on a problem where it's not a good fit, it's like trying that you know uh, round peg in a square hole or whatever you flip that around square peg round hole. Sure. Uh, you know, Either it's way. going to be it's going to take up way too many resources. So um, there's some kind of inherent. Uh, it's, it's a success uh, cycle, if you will. Yeah. Because they're trying, at the same time, they're trying to attract people. They're trying to find the right people that, you know, so hopefully it's a win-win for, for both parties. A lot of great information about franchises in general. That's, yeah, no, that. he, he really, I mean, it, 
he explained without getting meticulous about it, it yeah. why franchises make sense for some folks and why and, and quite frankly why they don't and and like you said i mean if it's not a good fit they don't want your no. your money either <laughs> That's right. right. Cause it's, it's, yeah, they're not going to make money in the long run. No, yeah. and they're going to devalue their brand, right? Bringing in, you know, somebody that's going to be too much of a lone wolf right out of the gate. Eh, yeah. Not so good. You know, it doesn't matter what your track record is. We have our brand. You got to go yeah. do it our way. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah good. and if you're if you're a, a franchise owner that's had success or you or had maybe not so much success or had the change to make things work, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, feedback at businessshow.co. You want to come on and talk about your experience and, uh, you know, give it give a different take on things that would be great yeah yeah we'd love to love to hear from you love to chat with you it's great stuff thank you so much for listening everybody thanks for everything my friend shannon we uh thank you dave yeah absolutely and um you know keep living that charmed life send us your feedback at businessshow.co review the show buy our book but keep living that charmed life i'll see you next week